Hello, Stephen here. It's a lovely sunny day. I'll try not to dazzle with you there, but I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you some of the binoculars I use for stargazing and to give you a few tips on the type of binocular that works. I'm a big fan of binoculars. I love telescopes too, but I just find the versatility of binoculars um, really good, especially living in a country like Scotland where we get lots of changeable weather. I find them really quick to set up and use. So let me start by showing you these two handheld pairs. This is the smallest binocular I use. It's an Olympus, a DSP-1. It's an 8x40. It's very lightweight. Um, my young children can use it, use them. And the main thing I like about these, these are probably my go-to pair, just for popping out and looking at the moon and the stars, is they have a lovely wide field of view and they're so light that I can hold them really steady. And that's very important um, when you're choosing binoculars. I think many people think about getting the biggest pair they can afford, but that's not always a good idea. Um, incidentally, the 8 by 40 refers to the magnification, so that's 8 times magnification. And the 40 is the millimetre size of the objectives. And the bigger that number, the more light gathering power you're going to get. So if you want to move up in power, you could go up to these 10 by 50s. So you're gaining a bit of magnification and you're letting in more light, you'll see more stars, but you'll see less of a field of view. So the smaller ones I showed you have about an eight degree field of view. Now what's eight degrees? Well, it's a little less than your fist extended to the horizon. So if you try to imagine how many stars you might see, so potentially you'd take in most of the belt stars of Orion with that sort of field of view. So, a little bit more magnification, smaller field of view, and you will get a slightly more unstable image with these when you're hand holding them. So if that's a concern for you, or if you've got young children who maybe want to use the binoculars, I would definitely uh, go for something smaller, something like the 8x40s. Um, and this actually is the main binocular I use for outreach. So. At the two astronomy programs I run at Abriakin and Merkinch. These are the binoculars we use and we hand out to folks coming to the evenings. So the other great thing about binoculars is you can mount them. So this pair here I frequently have mounted. So this is exactly the same pair and I've got a pretty basic uh, camera tripod here. This is a Velbon DF61. It wasn't very expensive. And because this binocular is light, you don't need a really sturdy mount for it. If you do mount your binoculars, you'll find that your views are even more stable and it can be more relaxing um, to observe using a setup like this. Also, you can attach um, one of these clamps and put your phone onto the eyepiece and take some images or maybe you want to live stream. So that's what I use for doing most of my moon live streaming. Now if you want to get really powerful you could step up to something like these. So these are my the biggest pair of binoculars I've got. They're absolutely massive. These are Celestron a Skymaster 25 by 100 millimeters. So it's basically two refracting telescopes stuck together and it's impossible to hand hold these for more than about three or four seconds. So don't even think about uh, buying binoculars like this without a very adequate mount. And this is the tripod I have. It's a very sturdy tripod. 
Uh, this particular model is the First Horizon. Um, and I'd say it's just at the limit for these. Um, because they're so heavy, you really do need sturdy mounting. And this is a good mount. I wouldn't say it's perfect. I'm probably going to look to upgrade to something that's maybe more balanced and more relaxing to use. Um, but it does the job. Um, and if you do set these binoculars up, the views through them are astonishing. So 25 magnification, so way more powerful than these smaller binoculars. And what that tends to translate to is incredible views of the moon and much more vibrant views of star clusters like the Pleiades and brighter uh, views of galaxies. So the Andromeda galaxy, for example, looks amazing through these binoculars. So it's kind of a compromise, maybe. I think you're getting into the territory of telescopes, though, when you start to look at binoculars like this. So I would never uh, choose a binocular like this as my main go-to device. Like I say, my recommendation is to stick with these smaller binoculars first. And if you're on a limited budget and you've maybe only got a hundred pounds to spend, you could easily afford these. I believe these are about fifty pound and maybe going up to sixty pound. So highly recommended. And I'm not affiliated with Olympus, by the way. So any brand of binoculars that has those stats, ten by fifty or eight by forty, will um, serve you very well indeed. So there we go. I hope you found that video useful and any questions just feel free to ask me on the page and I might do a video on my telescope uh, sometime in the future and talk about telescopes also. So thank you very much for listening.